Gwalior pronunciation is a major and the northernmost city in the Indian state of Madhya Pradesh and one of the counter magnet cities. Located 319 kilometers 198 miles south of Delhi, the capital city of India, Gwalior occupies a strategic location in the Gurd region of India. The city and its fortress have been ruled by several historic northern Indian kingdoms. From the Kachchapagadas in the 10th century, Tomars in the 13th century, it was passed on to the Mughal Empire, then to the Maratha in 1754, followed by the Sindhya in the 18th century. A study of urban pollution in 2016 found the city to have the highest level of air pollution in India, and the second highest in the world. Besides being the administrative headquarters of Gwalior District and Gwalior Division, Gwalior has many administrative offices of the Chambal Division of Northern Madhya Pradesh. Several administrative and judicial organizations, commissions and boards have their state and national headquarters situated in the city. Gwalior was the winter capital of the state of Madhya Bharat which later became a part of the larger state of Madhya Pradesh. Prior to Indian independence on 15 August 1947, Gwalior remained a princely state of the British Raj with the Sindhya as the local rulers. High rocky hills surround the city from all sides, on the north it just forms the border of the Ganga Yamuna drainage basin. The city however is situated in the valley between the hills. Gwalior's metropolitan area includes Gwalior city centre, Morar cantonment, Lashka Gwalior Lashka subcity, Thadapur. Gwalior was one of the major sites of rebellion during the 1857 uprising. Post-independence, Gwalior has emerged as an important tourist attraction in central India while many industries and administrative offices came up within the city. Before the end of the 20th century it became a million-plus agglomeration and now it is a metropolitan city in central India. Gwalior is surrounded by industrial and commercial zones of neighbouring districts Malanpur, Behind, Banmore, Morena on all three main directions. A 2016 report of the World Health Organization found Gwalior to be the second most air polluted city in the world and the most polluted city in India. Gwalior has been selected as one of the hundred Indian cities to be developed as a smart city under PM Narendra Modi's flagship Smart Cities mission. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> According to local tradition, Gwalior owes its name to a sage of former times. Siraj Sen, a local prince, is said to have lost his way in the forest. On a secluded hill, he met an old man, the sage Gwalipa, whose influence almost took him by surprise. Upon asking the sage for some drinking water, he was led to a pond, where the waters not only quenched his thirst but cured him of leprosy. Out of gratitude, the prince wished to offer the sage something in return, and the sage asked him to build a wall on the hill to protect the other sages from wild animals which often disturbed their yajnas or puhas. Siraj Sen later built a palace inside the fort, which was named Gwalior, after the sage, and eventually the city that grew around the fort took the same name. History The earliest historical record found at Gwalior is the Gwalior inscription of the Alchon Hun ruler Mihirakula. It describes Mihirakula's father Taramana as a ruler of the earth, of great merit, who was renowned by the name of the glorious Taramana, by whom, through his heroism that was specially characterized by truthfulness, the earth was governed with justice, and his Mihirakula as the lord of the earth, as of 520 AD. In 1231 Iltutmish captured Gwalior after an 11-month long effort and from then till the 13th century it remained under Muslim rule. In 1375, Raja Veer Singh was made the ruler of Gwalior and he founded the rule of the Tomar clan. During those years, Gwalior saw its golden period. The Jain sculptures at Gwalior Fort were built under Tomar rule. Man Singh Tomar made his dream palace, the Man Mandir Palace which is now a tourist attraction at Gwalior Fort. Babur described it as, "...the pearl in the necklace of forts of India and not even the winds could touch its masts." The Daily Light and Sound Show organized there tells about the history of the Gwalior Fort and Man Mandir Palace. Later in the 1730s, the Sindhyas captured Gwalior and it remained a princely state during the British rule. Chitterbuj Temple at Gwalior Fort claims the world's very first occurrence of zero as a written number. 
By the 15th century, the city had a noted singing school which was attended by Tansen. Gwalior was ruled by the Mughals for the longest time and then the Marathas. Rebellion of 1857 Gwalior is also known for not participating in the 1857 rebellion, mainly due to non-cooperation with Rani Lakshmibai. After Kalpi Jansi fell into the hands of the British on 24 May 1858, Lakshmibai sought shelter at Gwalior Fort. The Maharaja of Gwalior was not willing to give up his fort without a fight as he was a strong ally of the British, but after negotiations, his troops capitulated and the rebels took possession of the fort. The British attacked Gwalior in no time, the battle was fought by Lakshmibai. Indian forces numbered around 20,000, and British forces around 1,600 assisted by Maharaja of Gwalior troops. Lakshmibai's example is remembered to this day by Indian nationalists. She died fighting, and Gwalior was free from rebels. There is a statue of Lakshmibai on her horse which commemorates her contribution to the fight for independence. Tatya Tope and Rao Sahib escaped. Tatya Tope was later captured and hanged in April 1859. <inaudible> <inaudible> Princely state of Gwalior Sindhya is a Maratha clan in India. This clan included rulers of the Gwalior state in the 18th and 19th centuries, collaborators of the colonial British government during the 19th and the 20th centuries until India became independent, and politicians in independent India. The Sindhya state of Gwalior became a major regional power in the second half of the 18th century and figured prominently in the three Anglo Maratha Wars. Gwalior first fell to the British in 1780. The Sindhyas held significant power over many of the Rajput states and conquered the state of Ajmer. During the Indian Rebellion of 1857, the city was briefly held by rebel forces in 1858 until they were defeated by the British. The Sindhya family ruled Gwalior until India's independence from the United Kingdom in 1947, when the Maharaja Javajirao Sindhya acceded to the government of India. Gwalior was merged with a number of other princely states to become the new Indian state of Madhya Bharat. Javajirao Sindhya served as the state's Rajpramukh, or the appointed governor, from 28 May 1948 to 31 October 1956, when Madhya Bharat was merged into Madhya Pradesh. In 1962, Rajmata Vijayarahe Sindhya, the widow of Maharaja Javajirao Sindhya, was elected to the Lok Sabha, beginning the family's career in electoral politics. She was first a member of the Congress Party, and later became an influential member of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Her son, Maharaja Madhavrao Sindhya was elected to the Lok Sabha in 1971 representing the Congress Party, and served until his death in 2001. His son, Jyotiraditya Sindhya, also in the Congress party, was elected to the seat formerly held by his father in 2004. <laughs> Demographics As of 2011's India census, Gwalior had a population of 1,069,276. Males constitute 53% of the population and females 47%. Gwalior has an average literacy rate of 84.14%, higher than the national average of 74%, male literacy is 89.64% and female literacy is 77.92%. In Gwalior, about 11% of the population is under 6 years of age. The city's metropolitan population, which includes the commuter town of Morar Cantonment, was of 1,117,740. Religion Hinduism is practiced by the majority of the people in Gwalior other religions practiced include Islam 8.58%, Jainism 1.41%, Sikhism 0.56%, Christianity 0.29. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Languages. Hindi in its standard form is widely spoken in Gwalior. Marathi is the second most spoken language of the city, spoken by 20% of the population. 
There is a strong Marathi influence in Gwalior due to Maratha rule over the centuries hashtag ref 1, carat. Geography Gwalior is located at 26.22 degrees north 78.18 degrees east, 26.22, 78.18, in northern Madhya Pradesh 300 km 186 miles from Delhi. It has an average elevation of 197 meters 646 feet. Most part of it comes under Bundelkhand area. Topic: Waterways. The Tigra Dam is located on the outskirts of the city. The dam is now being used to store water from the Sank River and supply water to the whole of the city. The reservoir is used for leisure activities, including boating and adventure sports. The Swarna Rekha River is a reconstructed part of the Swarna Rekha River, which was dried during the British Raj. Boat rides run between Padav in central Gwalior to Gwalior Zoo. Topic: Parks and Gardens. The Lashkar part of Gwalior has many beautiful parks, including the Fool Bog or the Garden of Flowers, built for the welcome of Prince of Cambridge, and the Italian Garden. The garden, which was used by the Sindhias as a place of relaxation, is built in Italian texture with a water pool surrounded by musical fountains. Ambedkar Park and Gandhi Park are the other prominent parks. Gwalior Zoo, a lively and beautiful zoological parks, provides a home for white tigers, serpents, golden pheasants, sambar, hyena, bison, and others. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Climate. Gwalior has a sub-tropical climate with hot summers from late March to early July, the humid monsoon season from late June to early October, and a cool dry winter from early November to late February. Under Köppen's climate classification the city has a humid subtropical climate. The highest recorded temperature was 48 degrees Celsius and the lowest was minus 1 degree Celsius. Summers start in late March, and along with other cities like Jaipur and Delhi, are among the hottest in India and the world. Temperatures peak in May and June with daily averages being around 33 to 35 degrees Celsius 93 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and end in late June with the onset of the monsoon. Gwalior receives 900 mm of rain on average per year, most of which is concentrated in the monsoon months from late June to early October. August is the wettest month with about 310 mm of rain. Winter in Gwalior starts in late October, and is generally very mild with daily temperatures averaging in the 14 to 16 degrees Celsius 58 to 62 degrees Fahrenheit range, and mostly dry and sunny conditions. January is the coldest month with average lows in the 0 degrees Celsius range 32 degrees Fahrenheit and occasional cold snaps that plummet temperatures down to zero. Environment Gwalior was found to have the second highest level of air pollution according to a World Health Organization study in 2016. Particulates from the burning of garbage and fossil fuels make breathing the air of this city a hazard. Government The administration of Gwalior is shared between the departments and institutions of three levels of government, civic administration by the Gwalior Municipal Corporation, state administration by Government of Madhya Pradesh, and the Central Government of India. The judiciary has four levels, the lowest level being the Gwalior Gram Panchayat or Gram Nyayalaya. Above the Gram Panchayat is the district court for Gwalior district sits Lashka. Above that, the Madhya Pradesh High Court has its main seat in Jubalpur, but also a permanent bench in Gwalior City. The final court of appeal is the Supreme Court of India. <laughs> Gwalior Municipal Corporation The Gwalior Municipal Corporation is responsible for the civic infrastructure and administration of the city, which is divided into 66 wards. 
Vivek Narayan Shijwalkar is the mayor of Gwalior Municipal Corporation from the Bharatiya Janata Party. The Municipal Commissioner, a member of the Indian Administrative Service, is responsible for the corporation's finances and for the services and works conducted for the city. Gwalior Municipal Corporation covers an area of 289 square kilometers, 112 square miles. The municipality was created on the 6th of June 1887 with two divisions for Lashka and Morar, which later were merged with a single constitutional body. Topic: <laughs> State government. There are 3 seats in the state legislative assembly, the Madhya Pradesh Vidhan Sabha. Responsible for the Gwalior municipal area, the constituencies being Gwalior, Gwalior East and Gwalior South. Prior to the 2008 boundary changes the seats were Gird, Lashka East, and Lashka West. State institutions include, Office of the President Board of Revenue of Madhya Pradesh Office of the Transport Commissioner of Madhya Pradesh Office of the Commissioner Land Records and Settlements Madhya Pradesh Office of the State Excise Commissioner of Madhya Pradesh. Topic Central Government The National Assembly seat covering Gwalior is the Gwalior Lok Sabha constituency. The seat is currently held by Narendra Singh Tomar of the BJP. Central Government Institutions include, Office of the Accountant General AG of Madhya Pradesh Defence Research and Development Establishment DRDE, Border Security Force BSF, Academy National Cadet Corps NCC, Officers Training Academy OTA, Indian Air Force IAF, Station Maharajpura Air Base. Office of the Narcotics Commissioner of India Central Bureau of Narcotics Central Intelligence Bureau HO Indian Army Cantonment, Morar Cantonment, Central Potato Research Institute, Gwalior. Topic: Transport and Connectivity. Topic: Railway. Gwalior is a major railway junction in the northern central region. The Gwalior Junction station code, GWL, is the part of the North Central Railways. Gwalior is one of the few places where both narrow gauge and broad gauge railways tracks are operational. Gwalior is the terminus for the longest narrow gauge route operating in the world, covering a distance of 198 km from Gwalior Junction to Shiapur. Gwalior Junction is a five railway track intersection point. It won an award for the best and cleanest station of North Central Railway Zone. Goes to Agra AGC. Goes to Jhansi JHS. Goes to Shivpuri SVPI. Goes to Etawa ETW. Goes to Shiapur Kailan SOE on narrow gauge Lanegwalior is one of the major commercial railway stations of the North Central Railway, whose zonal headquarters is centered in Allahabad. The station has won awards from Indian Railways for excellent clean infrastructure in 1987, 1988, 1989 and 1992. It is in the Adrash station category of Indian Railways. Gwalior Light Railway connects to the Kuno Wildlife Sanctuary in Shiapur. It is the junction point to reach tourist destinations like Shivpuri, Dolpur and Behind. Gwalior is on the main train line between Delhi station code, NDLS, and Mumbai Bombay CSTM, and between Delhi and Chennai Moss. Some trains starting here and travelling towards eastern India via Gwalior Junction, Jhansi Junction provide direct connections to points in eastern India including Kolkata, Calcutta, Barani, Varanasi, and Allahabad. There are about 50 trains to New Delhi and Agra every day, and around the same number of trains to Bhopal and Nagpur stations. However, fewer trains are available for long routes like Mumbai and Chennai. The luxury trains, the Maharaja Express and the India on Wheels, stop at Gwalior on their week-long round trip of tourist destinations in central India. More than 180 trains stop at Gwalior Railway Station. <laughs> Road Gwalior is fairly well connected to other parts of Madhya Pradesh and India by national and state highways. The proposed north-south corridor of the Golden Quadrilateral Highway project passes through the city. 
The Agra Bombay National Highway NH3 passes through Gwalior, connecting it to Shivpuri on one end and Agra on the other. The Yamuna Expressway is easily accessible from Agra for the travellers going to New Delhi. The city is connected to the Jhansi by the National Highway 75, towards the south of the city. The northern part of the city is connected to the city of Mathura via National Highway 3. There are bus services to and from all major and minor cities near Gwalior, including Bhopal, Agra, Delhi, Jubalpur, Jhansi, Behind, Morena, Dolpur, Etawa, Daisha, Jaipur, and Indore. Topic: Airport. Gwalior Airport (IATA: GWL: ICAO: VIGR), also called Rajamata Vijaya Rajay Sindhya Airport, is the airport of Gwalior. It has an Indian Air Force base which stations Mirage fighters. Topic: <laughs> Local public transport. Gwalior's public transport system mainly consists of tempos, auto rickshaw taxis, Ola cabs, and micro buses. Municipal corporations, Gwalior City Bus, covers some routes in the city. Blue radio taxis are also available in Gwalior. The tempos and auto rickshaws are often cited as a cause of pollution and road congestion, and the local government has plans to replace the tempos with vans that will run on liquefied petroleum gas. Recently, a 3 km cycle track has been built in the city, and the city became the fourth in India to have this type of facility. The Gwalior Metro is the proposed project for Gwalior City. The project was announced by State CM Shivraj Singh Chauhan on 17 October 2014. Hence District Administration is preparing a DPR detailed project report for the Gwalior Metro. Topic Culture Topic Art and Literature Gwalior holds a major and a special position in the Indian classical music, art and literature. Gwalior is a well acknowledged place of art, associated with historic as well as contemporary evidence. In August 2005 a mural created by AASU Tosh Pandagrahi and five other artists was acknowledged as the world's largest indoor mural by Guinness World Records. Marathi Sahitya Semelan, the conference on Marathi literature was held in Gwalior in 1961. It was presided over by writer Kusumavati Deshpand herself a poet and also the wife of Kavi Anil. She was the first female president of the annual Semelan since its inception in 1878. Culturally Gwalior is the confluence of two rich cultures Bundeli and Braj. In more recent times, actor family has been based out of Gwalior for at least three generations with Muztar Khairabadi, his son Jan Nisar actor and his grandson Javed actor being the prominent literary figures. Nida Fosli, one of the most famous Indian Hindi and Urdu poets grew up here. Former Indian Prime Minister, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, is also a well-known writer and poet. Music Raja Man Singh Tomar, the king of Gwalior between 1486 and 1516 AD, was a patron of Drupad Hindi. Drupad, Drupad is a vocal genre in Hindustani classical music, said to be the oldest still in use in that musical tradition. Its name is derived from the words, Dhruva, fixed, and Pada, words. The term may denote both the verse form of the poetry and the style in which it is sung. Gwalior holds a major position in the Indian classical music, with being the birthplace of the oldest Hindustani Sangeet Gharana, Gwalior Gharana. Gwalior holds an unparalleled reputation in Sangeet and has retained Indian traditions and the wealth of music intact over the years. The Gwalior Gharana is not only the oldest Kyle Gharana but it is also one of the most prominent Gharana being the one to which most classical Indian musicians can trace the origin of their style. The rise of the Gwalior Gharana started with the reign of the great Mughal Emperor Akbar 1542-1605. Akbar's favourite singer was Tansen, who came from the Gwalior area and whose ashes were buried in Gwalior after his death. The Tansen tomb in Gwalior was constructed in his remembrance. 
Tansen festival started in the 1930s, and currently artists from all over India come to perform in the festival. Bainath Prasad alias Baiju Bara was a classical singer Drupadiya who lived in Gwalior for his whole life under the patronage of Man Singh. Baiju was born in Chanderi and was cremated there. He received his musical training in Vrindaban under Swami Guru Haridas G. He was the court musician of Gwalior along with Nayak Charyu, Bakshu, and others. Sarad player Amjad Ali Khan is also from the city of Gwalior. His grandfather, Ghulam Ali Khan Bangish, became a court musician in Gwalior. Tansan Music Festival The Tansan Sangeet Samaro, Tansan Music Festival, is celebrated every year on the Tansan tomb in Gwalior during the month of December. Tansan Samaro is a platform where artists from all over India gather and participate to deliver vocal and instrumental performances. The Tansan Sangeet Samaro is organized by the government of Madhya Pradesh, in association with the Academy of the Department of Culture. During the festival, music lovers and artists from all over the world gather to offer their tribute to Tansan. The Academy offers honors to senior celebrities and junior artists by including them in the Samaro through their music of performance. Sarad Gar, this museum of music has been set up in the old ancestral house of musician Hafiz Ali Khan. It houses ancient instruments of the Indian masters of the past. It also houses a collection of photographs and documents. Sarad Gar is an institution devoted to promoting Indian classical music, heritage and culture. Through this window to the past, music lovers can gain a better understanding of the evolution and history of Indian classical music and a deeper perspective and insight into the context of the art as it exists today. Media and communication There are newspapers, magazines, local TV stations and four FM radio stations in Gwalior. Patrika is the leading newspaper and Dainik Bhaskar is one of the oldest and most widely read newspapers. Swadesh and Naidunya are other well-established newspapers. More newspapers published in Gwalior are BPN Times, Raj Express, Dainik Madhya Raj, Nav Bharat, Youth Engine, Dainik Jagran, People's Samachar, Dainik Adityas. Evening newspapers are Sandhya Samachar, Gwalior Sandesh, Sudarshan Express. A Lake Life in Pages is one of the leading youth magazine published and widely read across the city. Solstir Magazine is a bi monthly lifestyle and automotive magazine in Gwalior. The radio industry has expanded with private FM channels being introduced. The FM radio channels that broadcast in the city include Big FM 92.7 MHz, Red FM 93.5, Chaska FM 95 MHz, My FM 94.3 MHz, and Lemon 91.9 MHz. The state-owned company, Doordarshan, transmits two terrestrial television channels. The city has local TV stations from companies. Major local channels include Hathway Win, Harsh Networks, KMJ Communications, and Den Networks. Sports Lakshmibai National University for Physical Education operational since 1957 is the largest physical education institutions in Asia. Gwalior also has the railway hockey stadium with artificial turf. Roop Singh Stadium is a cricket ground with a capacity of 45,000. The stadium has hosted 10 one-day international ODI matches. Of the 10 matches played so far, the first one was played between India and West Indies on the 22nd of January 1988. The ground has floodlights and has also hosted day-night encounters. One match of the 1996 Cricket World Cup was also played on this ground, between India and West Indies. Dayan Chand was a famous hockey player from Jhansi which is near to Gwalior. Ankit Sharma is a cricketer from Gwalior and playing in the Indian Premier League. Athletics is also played in this city. Vishal Kame was the youngest hammer thrower of India when he participated in national athletics games in 2006 at the age of 14 years. Topic Stadium and Sports University Captain Roop Singh Stadium is a cricket ground in Gwalior. The stadium has hosted 10 one-day international ODI matches. Of the 10 matches played so far, the first one was played between India and West Indies on the 22nd of January 1988. The ground has floodlights and has hosted day-night encounters. 
It can hold 45,000 people at a time. It was originally a hockey stadium named after great Indian hockey player Roop Singh, brother of hockey player Dhyan Chand. The ground has flood lights and has hosted day-night encounters as well. One match of the 1996 Cricket World Cup was also played on this ground, between India and West Indies. This ground is notable for hosting the ODI between India and South Africa in which Sachin Tendulkar scored the first ever double century in ODI cricket. The Lakshmibai National University of Physical Education LNIPE, Gwalior was established by the Ministry of Education and Culture, Government of India as Lakshmibai College of Physical Education LCPE in August 1957, the centenary year of the War of Independence. It is located at Gwalior, where Rani Lakshmibai of Jhansi, a heroine of the war, died during the rebellion in 1857. The institute started as an affiliated college of the Vikram University, Ujjain and then came to the folds of Jiwaji University, Gwalior in 1964. The institute was given the status of national importance, and hence it was renamed as Lakshmibai National College of Physical Education in 1973. In recognition of its unique status and character and to facilitate its further growth, the college was conferred the status of an «autonomous college» of Jiwaji University, Gwalior in 1982. A new international stadium at Shankarpur village near Gadagan Tessel has been proposed by Madhya Pradesh Cricket Association MPCA. The proposed stadium will be built on a land of 30 acres, which has been taken over by Gwalior District Cricket Association GDCA. The construction of the proposed stadium is expected to be completed in 2017. It will have a seating capacity of around 100,000 spectators. It will also be equipped with floodlights for night matches, a swimming pool, sauna bath, modern gym, dressing room, and 30 corporate boxes. Education <inaudible> 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 In the last few years, Gwalior has developed into a significant center of education. It hosts many prominent government as well as private universities and institutions including the following. <laughs> universities in Gwalior <laughs> Prominent institutes in Gwalior, class equals Wickedable sortable. Institute. Type. Location. Central Ayurvedic Research Institute and Hospital, Government, AAMKHO. College of Agriculture, Government, Racecourse Road. Dr. Bimrao Ambedkar Polytechnic College, Government, Jhansi Road. Gajara Raja Medical College, GRMC, Government, Heritage Theme Road, Lashka. Government Girls Polytechnic College, Government, MLB Road, Padiv. Gwalior Engineering College, GEC, Mahatma Dual Education Society, Airport Road, Maharajpura, Gwalior. Institute of Hotel Management, Government, Airport Road, Maharajpura. Adil Bihari Vajpayee Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management, IIITM, Government, Morena Link Road. Indian Institute of Tourism and Travel Management, Government, Govindpuri Kamla Raja Girls College KRG College, Government, Kampu Madhav Institute of Technology and Science MITS, Government Aided, Gola Ka Mandir, Racecourse Road Maharani Lakshmi Bai College of Excellence MLB College, Government, Katora Tal, Heritage Theme Road Rustamji Institute of Technology RJIT, Government, Border Security Force, BSF Academy, Tekhanpur Srimant Madhavrao Sindhya Government Model Science College, Government, Naka Chandrabani, Jhansi Road Gwalior has five Kendriya Vidyalayas managed by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India, several engineering and technological institutes and more than 30 affiliated engineering colleges. The famous Sindhya School, a boarding school for boys, and All India ranked third among other IPSC boarding schools by the Education World, Sindhya Kanya Vidyalaya boarding school for girls, Delhi Public School, Gwalior are also located in Gwalior City. Economy 
Gwalior is surrounded by three industrial areas, Sitholi, Banmore and Malanpur. All three of these sectors are on NH75, NH3 and NH92 respectively, with Malanpur being the largest. The city once had large manufacturing industries, such as Gwalior Grassam and JC. Mills of Berlinagar, but now this sector is left with only one major factory, JB Mangaram Limited. The important industries in the other sectors are dairy, chemical, manufacturing, and textiles. Handicraft and small industries are also found like Gwalior Potteries. Gwalior is also an important historical and tourism sector of the country. Therefore, the tourism sector also puts an effect into the city's economy. Gwalior is one of the CMAs to New Delhi to dissipate the load of urbanization from NCR see Section Future Developments. There are some manufacturing set-ups of some companies like Uflex, Flex Industries Limited, SRF, Ranbak C Laboratories, Cadbury, JK Tires, Surya Bulbs, Syaram and Railway Spring Factory Sitholi. Most of the local population is involved with trading firms or are self-employed. Many run OMEs and SMEs with Gwalior and Agra as the local market. The city is scattered with coaching institutes and educational institutions which provide employment to a large section of city's population. Trade fair Gwalior Trade Fair was started in 1905 by Maharaja Madho Rao Sindhya, King of Gwalior. The Gwalior Trade Fair is an annual trade fair showcasing the economy of Gwalior. It has become the biggest fair of Madhya Pradesh and one of the most colourful fairs of India. It starts in the second week of January and continues until February. <laughs> Major markets Maharaj Bada is the biggest market of Gwalior. Seven ancient buildings of different architectural styles Italian, Russian, Maratha, Mughal, Rajputi, Chinese can be viewed here. GHA's Mandi This area is presumed to be 700 years old It was established around the 15th century This place was used by the local population for business by selling grass for feeding animals of the king and upper class. Loha Mandi This place is also 600 years old in Gwalior This place was used for buying iron materials. Hazira It was the main market place of Gwalior that time. Nowadays this place is congested because of its irregular and unplanned structure made by old merchants in the 15th century. Gwalior has three shopping malls, DD City Mall with Fun Cinemas Multiplex, Maya Gitanjali Mall with Gold Digital Multiplex and the DB Mall with Inox Multiplex. Salasar Mall City Center, similarly to DD City Mall, also contains a multiplex. There are several gaming zones, some discotheques 10 Downing Street, DND, Barcode, Medusa, The Brown Room and Spectrum, and a water park in Gwalior. Sun City Amusement Park is a family entertainment center in Gwalior. The DD City Mall is one of the biggest malls of Madhya Pradesh. A multi-storied structure, it houses shops and showrooms of many national and international brands and has a number of eateries, as well as a fun cinemas multiplex. There are also some international and well-known fast food restaurants like Domino's Pizza, Subway restaurant and McDonald's in DD City Mall. Topic: <laughs> Gwalior Metro and Suburbs. The 2011 census put the population of Gwalior's urban area, metropolitan region, comprising Gwalior and Morar Cantonment, at 1,117,740. <laughs> Topic. Old Town The old town of Gwalior, commonly called Kila Gate is around 1 km .62 miles from Hazira, the largest area in Old Town, which is of considerable size but irregularly built. It lies at the eastern base of the rock and contains the tomb of the Sufi saints, Khwaja Kanun and Muhammad Gauss, erected during the early part of Mughal Emperor Akbar's reign, and the tomb of Mian Tansen, a great singer and one of the nine jewels of Akbar's court. A town called by his name Gaspora situated near the tomb of Mohaumd Gauss. Real town consisted of some streets and mohalas which are presumed to be 700 to 800 years old areas in Gwalior which are still backward areas in Gwalior due to improper management of new town. These old areas are as follows. 
Koteshwar Temple. This temple is a 700-year-old temple of Lord Shiva whose shivling was on Gwalior Fort, but when the Mughals conquered it they ordered the shivling thrown out. When the troops did that, the shivling was automatically established in a field below the fort without any harm. Muslim Ghazi told the emperor not to harm the shivling. In the late 18th century Sindhias built a temple for that shivling, now known as Koteshwar Mahadev. Baba Kapoor This place is 500 meters away from Ghas Mandi. This place was named Baba Kapoor because of Saint Shah Abdul Ghaffur. Kashi Naresh Ki Gali This is a 600-year-old residential street in Gwalior It was given name as Kashi Naresh Ki Gali because in the 14th century when the Emperor of Kashi was defeated in war he was sent to exile by oppositions at that time Gwalior Emperor and Kashi's Emperor were good friends when Kashi's Emperor told Gwalior's Emperor whole story, Emperor gave him an entire street for living at that time which is now known as Kashi Naresh Ki Gali, their family even now resides there in Kashi Naresh Ki Gali in Rajaji Ka Bada. Meanings, Naresh. Topic King Rajaji, Gali. Topic Street in Hindi language, Bada. Big area. Topic Lashka Subsidy The name of Lashka is a Persian word meaning army or camp, as this was originally the camp, and later the permanent capital, of the Sindhya dynasty of Gwalior state. Lashka was the capital of Madhya Bharat from 1950 to 1956. Jayaji Chowk is the central focus of Lashka, with a large square, a former opera house, banks, tea, coffee, and juice stands, and a municipal market building. Thriving bazaars surround the chowk. Many jewelry shops are situated near Jayaji Chowk, also known as Maharaj Bada. A source of water for the city is Tyra Dam, built on the Sankh River 20 km to the north. The Gajra Raja Medical College, founded in 1946 by the Maharaja Jiwaji Rao Sindhya and the Maharani Vijayaraja Sindhya, is situated in Lashka on Palace Road, near Katora Tal, together with a group of hospitals. J. Vilas Palace, patterned on the French Palace of Versailles, is located here. Morar Cantonment Morar Cantonment, formerly a separate town, lies 5 kilometres east of the old city. It was formerly a British military cantonment. Morar is generally considered a rural farming town. The area is known as the green part of Gwalior because much of the area is still rural. Morar was the scene of the most serious uprising in central India. On 1 June 1858, Jayajirao led his forces to Morar to fight a rebel army led by Tatya Tope, Rani Lakshmibai and Rao Sahib. This army had 7,000 infantry, 4,000 cavalry and 12 guns while he had only 1,500 cavalry, his bodyguard of 600 men and 8 guns. In this attack, the rebel cavalry took the guns and most of the Gwalior forces except the bodyguard went over to the rebels some deserted. The Maharaja and the remainder fled without stopping until they reached the British garrison at Agra. By 1900 it had become a centre for local trade and had an important training industry, with a population of 19,179 in 1901. The Section Sun Temple is situated in Morar at Residency Road. The cantonment area makes up a large area of Morar which contains official residences for the Indian Army. It has many canteens for army personnel. St. Paul's School and Pragati Vidyapith School are nearby. There is an Air Force base in the Pinto Park region. Thadapur Thadapur is said to have got its name from State Army Unit 34, which once resided there. Gandhi Road divides Thadapur into two areas. Morar at one end of the road and Balwant Nagar on the other. Thadapur primarily consists of residential areas like Darpan Colony, Madhav Rao Sindhya Enclave, the Government Blocks, Vivek Nagar, and Suresh Nagar. 
Places of note are the Dwarikadish Mandir, Bhagwan Colony, Tomar Building, Chohan Payao, the Chohan family, Gala Kothar, Ramkrishna Ashram, Saraswati Nagar, Govindpuri, Gayatri Vihar, Shakti Vihar, Shakundalapuri, Dushant Nagar, Shanti Vihar, and Mayor Market along with Sai Baba Mandir in Shakti Vihar Colony. Topic healthcare The prominent hospitals of Gwalior include Gajara Raja Medical College and the associated J.A. Hospital, Kamla Raja Hospital, Sahara Hospital, Mascot Hospital, BIMR Hospital, Cancer Hospital and Research Institute and many private doctor clinics. The Cancer Hospital and Research Institute is a nationally acclaimed medical center in oncology. There is also a charitable hospital named Satch Shri Anandpur Trust Charitable Hospital which provides free treatment. There is a government Ayurvedic college and a private homeopathic college Basandhara Rajay Homeopathic Medical College which is run by the Biochemic and Homeopathic Association of Gwalior, also providing healthcare education and services. <laughs> Future developments Gwalior West is being developed as a counter-magnet project with funding support from the National Capital Region. It has been introduced to increase investment in education, industry and real estate. This is hoped to counteract the closing of manufacturers such as Hotline, Simcoe and Grassum Gwalior. The Gwalior Master Plan launched by the local collector and municipal corporation initiates to improve the basic civic infrastructure of the city to meet the growing population of the city as well as to make the city beautiful for tourists. Architecture Gwalior Fort At the heart of Gwalior is Gwalior Fort of the Tamara dynasty. This structure was reputed to be one of the most structurally sound forts of India, having been improved by Raja Man Singh Tomar where a previous structure existed. It occupies an isolated rock outcrop. The hill is steepened to make it virtually unscalable and is surrounded by high walls which enclose buildings from several periods. The old town of Gwalior lies at the eastern base of the fortress. Lashka, founded by Daulat Rao Sindhya, formerly a separate town that originated as a military camp, lies to the south, and Morar, also a formerly separate town, lies to the east. Gwalior, Lashka and Morar are part of the Gwalior Municipal Corporation. The fort, popularly called the Gibraltar of India, overlooks the city. The Emperor Babur reputedly described it as the pearl in the necklace of the forts of Hind. This fort's architecture is unique. It displays a Chinese influence on Indian architecture, as Chinese dragons have been crafted at the hilt of the pillars. This influence was due to trade between China and India at the time of the fort's construction. After the death of Sher Shah Suri in 1545, who was ruling North India at that time, his son Islam Shah shifted his capital from Delhi to Gwalior and constructed Sher Shah Mandir or Sher Shah Fort in his father's memory. Islam Shah operated from Gwalior until his death in 1553. Islam Shah had appointed the Hindu warrior Hemu or Hemchandra Vikramaditya as his prime minister in Sher Shah Fort for the first time, who later on became the Hemchandra Vikramaditya king at Delhi and established Hindu Raj in North India. In the east of the city are two examples of early Mughal architecture, the mausoleum of the 16th century Sufi Saint Gu Muhammad and the tomb of Mian Tansen, a singer and one of the nine jewels of the Mughal Emperor Akbar's court. Right next to them is the Gujari Mahal, built by Tomar Rajput King Man Singh Tomar on demand of his consort Gujar Princess Marignani. Close to the heart of the city is J. Vilas Palace of the Sindhya dynasty, patterned on the Palace of Versailles. It combines Tuscan, Italian and Corinthian styles of architecture. Historically and architecturally, Gwalior is interesting first as an ancient seat of Jain worship, second for its example of palace architecture of the Hindu period between 1486 and 1516, and third as an historic fortress. Many historical places are found near the Dabra Batarwar Road. Prior to the founding of Gwalior, the region was also known by its ancient name of Gopasetra. Gwalior had an institutional seat of the Badarakas of Kashtha Sangh and later Mula Sangh. Gopachal Parvat is situated on the mountainous terrain at the slopes of Gwalior Fort. 
Gopachal Parvat contains unique statues of Jain Tirthankaras. The idol of Parshvanath seated on a lotus carved out of a single stone is the largest in the world, towering at 14 meters 46 feet in height and 9 meters 30 feet in breadth. There is a series of 26 Jain statues in a single line. Built between 1398 and 1536 by Tomar kings, these Jain Tirthankar statues are one of a kind in architecture. Municipality Museum, is situated a little distance from Rani Lakshmibai's tomb. Modern 5D is Madhya Pradesh's first multi-dimensional theatre launched in the 2011 trade fair of Gwalior. It was built by Gwalior's leading enterprise Modern Techno Projects P Limited. Modern 5D is recognized as India's first own multi-dimensional theatre. Shyam Vatika is a banquet hall which has the world's largest indoor mural, as recognized by Guinness World Records. Within the fort are some marvels of medieval architecture. The 15th-century Gujari Mahal is a monument to the love of Raja Mansingh Tomar for his intrepid Gujar queen, Marignani. The outer structure of Gujari Mahal has survived in an almost total state of preservation. The interior has been converted into an archaeological museum housing rare antiquities, some of them dating back to the 1st century AD. Many of these have been defaced by the iconoclastic Mughals. Sas Bahu Temple, a 9th century shrine, Sas Bahu Temple in the fort allures not only the devotees but also the tourists with its artistic value. Despite what its name may suggest, these temples are not dedicated to Sas mother -in -law and Bahu daughter -in -law but rather the short form of Shastra Bahu, another name of Lord Vishnu. These temples situated adjacent to each other and the larger one is elaborately decorated with beautiful carvings and sculptures. The roof of the larger temple is adorned with a marvelous lotus carving. Teli Ka Mandir Telangana Mandir A structure of about 100 feet, Teli Ka Mandir in Gwalior Fort distinguishes itself from the other compositions of its time because of its unique architecture. Though the roof of the temple holds a Dravidian style, the sculptures are typically North Indian. The temple bears a close resemblance to the temple of Prathihara Vishnu, and is filled with images of coiled serpents, passionate couples, river goddesses, and a flying Garuda. The temple architecture follows the Indo-Aryan and Nagara styles and is believed to be among the oldest constructions in the fort. The Talika Mandir, or Oil Man's Temple, owes its name to Teli, a term for an oil grinder or oil dealer. Many suggestions have been put forward to explain this name historically, but in fact the name is not old, the temple being used for processing oil before the British occupied the fort and used the building, albeit temporarily, as a coffee shop. The Talika Mandir is the loftiest temple among all the buildings in Gwalior Fort with a height of about 30 metres. The temple consists of a garba griha, that is, sanctum proper for the deity, and an antarala to enter into the temple. It can be approached by a flight of steps provided on the eastern side. The most striking feature of the temple is the wagon vaulted roof, a form used over rectangular shrines which normally accommodated a row of mother goddesses. The goddesses from the interior vanished centuries ago and have not been traced. The exterior walls of the temple are decorated with sculptures, many of which are damaged. The niches, shaped like temples, are empty. The building carries a dedicatory inscription to the goddess in a niche on the southern side, but otherwise does not have any history. The architectural style points to a date in the late 8th century. The entrance gateway on the eastern side is a later addition of the British period, made by Major Keith in 1881. It was built as a way of saving various historic pillars and other pieces no longer in their original context. Jain rock-cut sculptures, a striking part of the Jain remains at Gwalior is a series of caves or rock-cut sculptures, excavated in the rock on all sides, and numbering nearly a hundred, great and small. Most of them are mere niches to hold statues, though some are cells that may have been originally intended for residences. According to inscriptions, they were all excavated within a short period of about 33 years, between 1441 and 1474. One of the colossal figures is 57 feet 17 meters high, taller than any other in northern India. Gurudwara Dada Bandi Chud Gwalior Fort also has the Gurudwara, built in the memory of the sixth Sikh, Guru Har Gobind. This Gurudwara is particularly large and grand, built entirely of marble with coloured glass decorating the main building. Recital of the Guru Granth Sahib takes place here and Mughal kings used to visit Gwalior regularly. There is a Gurdwara that was converted to a mandir of Kali Devi, 
and process is on to take it back by Sikhs. Adhyatma Nikitan is an important ashram near Gwalior Fort. Topic: <laughs> J. Vilas Mahal. Also called J. Vilas Palace, is the residential palace turned museum of the Maratha rulers of Gwalior, the Sindhyas. The palace has notable collections of antiques. The museum is one of the largest in Madhya Pradesh and has the world's largest chandelier and the complex is a mixture of British and Hindu architecture. The palace was constructed in 1874 as an attempt to bring the Palace of Versailles to Gwalior. Topic. Tombs and Chatras of historic importance Chatras of Sindhyas is situated close to the city near Akaleshwar temple and is the burial place for the Sindhyas who ruled the city for numerous years. Designated persons like Maharaja Madhavrao Sindhya, Vijayarajay Sindhya and His Highness Javajirao Sindhya were cremated here. Tansan's tomb, Gwalior is the birthplace of the musician Tansan. He was one of the Nine Gems of Akbar. Ghaz Muhammad's tomb. The tombs of Great Ghaz Muhammad and Tansan are situated on the same territory. Tomb of Rani Lakshmibai, a famous freedom fighter, at Fulbag area. It is here where the she died in 1858 fighting against the British. It is also her burial place. <laughs> Sun Temple Located in section Morar Cantonment, the Sun Temple Vivs von Mandir, is dedicated to the Sun God Surya. Designed as a facsimile of the Sun Temple of Konark in Odisha, the temple was sponsored and built in the 1980s by the Birla family. The temple is located in a serene ambience and a well maintained garden within the temple premises is very attractive. This holy temple draws the locals and tourists alike who gather here to render their prayers. Before the temple was built the gardens had the name Tapavan. The gardens were the location of an ill-fated attempt to introduce African lions by the Maharaja of Gwalior state. Topic Notable people Amjad Ali Khan, Sarad player and musician Adil Bihari Vajpayee, former Prime Minister of India Javed actor, famous poet, lyricist and writer, born in Gwalior. His family was based in Gwalior for nearly three generations, from his grandfather's time. Kartik Aryan, actor, born in Gwalior Sharad Kelkar, actor, born in Gwalior Payesh Mishra, Indian film and theatre actor, music director, lyricist, singer, scriptwriter. Mamta Sharma, singer Mani Badnam, Fevakal Say etc., born in Gwalior Ganesh Shankar Vidyarthi, famous Hindi writer, born in Gwalior Nida Fosli, famous Urdu writer and poet Roop Singh, Indian hockey player and Olympian Shivendra Singh, Indian national hockey player, born and lives in Gwalior Tansan, court musician of the Mughal ruler Akbar Salman Khan, Arbaz Khan, studied at Sindhya school Narendra Singh Tomar Pran Kumar Sharma, cartoonist and comic creator of Cha Cha Chaudhary fame moved here after the partition Sunil Bharti Middle, CEO of Bharti Airtel. He first joined the Winberg Allen School in Missouri, but later attended Sindhya School at Gwalior Anurag Kashyap, an Indian film director, screenwriter, producer and actor. He did his early schooling from Green School Dehradun and after the age of eight, he attended the Sindhya School in Gwalior Krishnarao Shankar Pandit, noted musician of the Gwalior Garana Meet Bros, the musician duo Hale from Gwalior. Pawan Karan, noted Indian major Hindi poet and writer. Mita Pandit, famous musician of Gwalior Garana Amitabh Mitra, Indo-English poet, visual artist and head of emergency medicine and trauma, South Africa. He studied at Gajara Raja Medical College, Gwalior Harshvardhan Rain, Telugu and Bollywood actor Kushal Tandon, Indian television actor. He did his schooling at Sindhya School in Gwalior Nitin Mukesh, singer. He did his schooling at Sindhya School in Gwalior, Navniti Prasad Singh, former Chief Justice of Kerala High Court. Topic Gallery. Topic See also. Category: People from Gwalior. Number one Air Force School, Gwalior. Kendriya Vidyalaya No. 4. Gwalior